Hey guys, welcome back to MuscleMentor.net. I'm Brad Hull, this is Justin Harris, and we're gonna talk a little bit about, uh, well, fasting. Uh, I've seen some stuff come up on, on social media and things like that, and I actually didn't really read much into it. I, I just remembered that I'd seen it, so this isn't in response to anything, it's just that I, I, I saw it on there. But people were talking about fasting and uh, you know if it could help with uh, off-season issues, like digestive issues or you know other things like that. And so we're just gonna give you our, our, our take on, on uh, fasting, whether that's intermittent fasting or fasting for a day out of the week or just lowering calories, we'll kind of go over all of it. I'm gonna come at it from the, the fact that I, I'm, here for, I'm here for bodybuilder or the physique sports. I'm here to coach bodybuilders, I'm here to coach physique athletes. And, uh, and as unfortunate as it may be, health, digestive issues, and any other issue non, not related to what builds more muscle at lower body fat levels is really not important to, 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 to what I do. Uh, and that, that's kind of a maybe a crappy way of looking at it, but yeah, I, I certainly think there's, there's benefits to fasting as far as digestive health. But I, I don't think there's benefits to fasting as far as muscle growth, and I don't think there's benefits to long term to fasting for any great period of time for, for for your your training ability, and so I think uh, it's it sucks sometimes, but uh, there's there's a big difference between eating to be healthy and and eating to build the most amount of muscle with the least amount of body fat. Now there can be some over, overlap. The eat the, the the things you eat when you're eating the most most amount of muscle for the least amount of body fat. You you can make choices like choose good vegetables to include in, in your diet, Cho choose good organic, not that I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm big on that either, but choose good organic uh, meat sources or, or choose freshly grown or, or wild caught fish or you know, anything like that. But those are secondary, those are, those are a lucky byproduct of the, of the fact of, of, of what the, the, the primary reason you're doing what you're doing is, is uh, is, is there to build muscle, and you know, and for whatever reason lately, I feel like I've been doing race car analogies, and I don't know why, because I'm not, a, I'm not a, I'm not a race car driver. You're not a racist. But, no, okay, yeah. but uh, is uh, the, uh, you, you know, uh, when you're building an, an engine, you're building an engine for a purpose. Whether it, if you're a truck puller, you're building a diesel engine, almost amount of torque. You, you're not looking for. You're, you're probably. Filling the cementing the block. You're not running co coolant because you know you're running at most a, a few minutes at a time. You're not worried about overheating. You just need a stronger block. Now, you know a stronger block isn't good for long-term overall health for the, for the engine. But that's what makes you most effective for that sport. If you're building for time down the track, if you're building a top fuel dragster, you might have your transmission as a, maybe a high and low gear. Why? Because you 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 finish the course in three seconds. You don't need the additional gears. Now that would certainly not be beneficial for a track car that needs to shift through six, seven, eight gears over for, 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 for whatever they're doing. And so you, you, you gotta focus on what are we really doing here? Now, the fact that we're, I think people come in, a lot of times come into bodybuilding with the, with the idea of wanting to eat healthy. And I think that initially they make the choices where, and, and enjoy it when they're eating bread, they choose the, Ezekiel bread or nine grain bread or you know whole wheat type things and that's good and that that's a situation where what is optimal for building muscle and keeping body fat low also happens to have healthy options but in my opinion that the the fasting thing is putting and, and this sounds terrible and it really it, it, and it does and this is a part of the sport that I, I, I always struggle with and I don't enjoy but when, when you're doing the, the the fasting idea you're putting health first gut health digestive health those things first, which for for health and for longevity you should put first. But if your goal is to be the best bodybuilder you possibly could be, you you can't put the health first. The nutrition has to be for building muscle and keeping body fat down. If you can do that, and there's some crossover where there's healthy things that hap that you do in that process, that's great. But th the focus is the the muscle and body fat. Yeah. Um. So I gotta agree with the health-wise. I mean, there's numerous studies and all the, all these things showing that calorie-restricted diets, fasting, and things like that increase longevity. Uh, they're they're great for overall health, gut health, all that type of thing. Yeah, and not to cut you off, but if you if you look at the real studies, if you wanna 
if you judge health by how long you live, the healthiest diet is as close to starvation as you can get without actually dying. That 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 in mice and and, and all uh, all studies they've done that shows more increase that shows to increase life expectancy the greatest. Right. So having excess muscle mass, excess fat mass, whatever it is, the bigger you are, basically the more unhealthy you are. Yeah. So and and that comes in you know and, and the more so calories I'm, you I'm take, more unhealthy more... than Brad. You dick. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so when I fucking lost my train of thought. Thanks a lot. Um, Okay, back to fasting. So I think – so there's intermittent fasting and all that stuff. I think that is absolutely awful for, for building muscle, for I, – I just – I don't think it's that great. Now, me personally, I don't eat until about 11 a.m., but that's just a I, – I don't know why. It's just I, I get work done in the morning. I feel more clarity if I just get up and, and start doing stuff. And then that's about when I get hungry, and then, and then we'll go from there. Uh, that's it's kind of a, a personal thing though. It's not an intermittent fasting type thing because probably the last time I eat is about two a.m. So it really isn't it really isn't fasting that much. Um, with uh, with whole day fasting, again, I, I think it, it probably is a good thing to give give your gut uh, a little bit of a break. Um, uh, again, that's you know if you're really having some issues with that, that might be something that will help with that. Is it the best for muscle growth? Again. No. Um, what I would rather see is is pushing pushing harder, you know, with the calories and everything that you need to be doing, and then doing a mini diet once body fat has has crept up too much. Because again, that's that's basically what you're doing, but you're very specifically and purposefully, you know, changing your diet to decrease body fat levels and keep the muscle that you that you have gained. Um, at the point I'm at in my life right now, though, I'd probably do the the fasting once, you know, one day every two weeks or something like that, mm-hmm. just so I feel better. But if if your goal is to just gain muscle, you know, bodybuilding only, then then yeah, it's it's probably not the probably not the best option the entire. I, mean, I, I actually I, I, I came to my head. I know I know a question we're gonna get a comment we're gonna get is Terry Crews because I see that all the time. Ads what? Terry Crews. Okay. Yeah. You know, he he. He's, I see I see this pop up everywhere all over the internet. He doesn't eat until 2 p.m. or something. Mm-hmm. And people are going to say, well, yeah, he's pretty ripped and big. Mm-hmm. And he is. He's muscular and lean. The thing is, he's not as muscular as he would be following a diet where his only focus was building muscle. Now, you, this is up to you to decide. This We're coming from a background of what a bodybuilding or physique sports-centric argument. Right. If your goal is to look relatively muscular not as not as muscular as you could be but relatively muscular and stay pretty lean and do it in a way where it's probably uh it's easier to maintain and less less harsh on a normal day-to-day life and th- then that's that's where the men fans could come along you know i could be what i you know i could drop 15 pounds of muscle and stay much leaner all year I, I don't i don't have much of an appetite in the morning i don't think most people do you know and so i could I could not eat for the first six or seven hours I'm awake, and probably not until the sixth or seventh hour would I. You die. <laughs> You're full of shit. You but die. well, I mean, I don't. I, I the only meals where I'm not just staring at the clock waiting to eat are my first couple meals yeah. of the day. Yeah. So I could take those calories, eat, and you know, take whatever. The, if it's a, a thousand calories during this chunk, I could remove those thousand calories, put f- five hundred extra calories to this chunk of time eat 500 calories less a day, which is about a pound of fat a week, and probably feel like I'm eating about the same. And, and But I wouldn't carry as much muscle. And But, I mean, it's definitely a way if you're going for the weekend warrior, I want to look good at the beach. It's a, it's a way to go. But for, from, from my perspective and from the perspective of what we do at Mu- Muscle Love Mentor is, is, is physique sport-centric. Yeah. And, you know, the other just to add on to that really quick is, you know, if, if you did decide to go that way, you would it's best to have that muscle first you have to be muscular first you have to have put in that time and those years of actually eating all the time get the muscle you want and then you can do something like i th- i think that intermittent intermittent fasting or fasting would work uh, but only after you've achieved that muscle. I don't think when you're trying to gain muscle, I, I think it would be well there's a lot i mean there's a large block of the day where and and we've we've talked before about how how 
infrequent and minimal protein synthesis actually is and how you're only really converting a handful of grams of protein a day to new muscle. And, but, but when you're not eating protein, especially if you're not doing it in the morning, there's a long period of time where your blood amino acid levels are low and it's very, if protein synthesis is triggered somewhere in a muscle, it's much, much more likely that there won't be the amino acids necessary to actually synthesize new muscle at that site.